Good afternoon, eighth grade students. Welcome to art class. I am Miss Guile and I will be your teacher for today. I am from Glendale, New York in Queens and I attend St. John's University, which is also in Queens. Today, we will be learning about how culture affects art, specifically during the Renaissance period. I will start sharing my screen with all of you. So, welcome to Art History with Miss Guile. Today is February 11th, 2021. Before we start, please make sure that your volume is up and you can hear me. Make sure you have all the essential materials for this lesson, which includes pencils, pens, highlighters, post-it notes, your iPad or laptop for viewing this video, a charger, just in case your laptop or iPad may be running low on battery, and any other materials that you feel you need to enrich your learning during this lesson. And finally, make sure your cameras are on and your microphones are off until I call on you. So, today's learning objectives. Today we will be learning about how art relates to a culture. Specifically, we will be looking at the time, place, and overall history of a piece of artwork. We will learn about the Mona Lisa and why it is considered a famous piece of art. We will also learn how to appreciate art. So let's discuss, what does art mean to you? I see everyone's hands going up. Lauren, what does art mean to you? You're muted, I can't hear you. Great. Yes, it's something beautiful, thank you. Anyone else? John, what does art mean to you? Yes, it is a, a way of communication. Good job. Anyone else? Peter, a representative of one's culture. Great job. I really am impressed by your answers. So now, in today's lesson, we will be watching two videos. One will be about the Renaissance, and the second will be about the Mona Lisa and how it relates to the Renaissance time period. So this graphic organizer is used for both videos. You can either screenshot it or you can find it under files in our class page. You can either use one for both videos or you can use two as a way of taking notes for one video and then a separate one for the other video. It's your choice. So let me describe this graphic organizer using the five W's and one H to find information. Who are some important artists from the Renaissance? What was the Renaissance? When did the Renaissance begin? Where did the Renaissance take place? Why was there a greater emphasis on art and culture, 
And how did culture affect art? At the bottom, you see a question that you will have to answer. So based on your answers to the five W's and one H, write a paragraph on how culture affected art during the Renaissance. I will get into that more at the end of our lesson. So now it's video time. Get your graphic organizers ready and anything else you might need for this lesson. This video is called Exploring the Renaissance. This fun character is Kaz Kazimo. Let's get into it. Greetings, friends. My name's Cosimo. Allow me to be your guide to the sights, sounds, and smells of the Italian Renaissance. So what is the Italian Renaissance? Well, the word Renaissance is a French word that means rebirth. A rebirth is a new beginning, and a new beginning it was. Between the 14th and 17th centuries, some really creative things started happening in Europe especially in drawing, sculpture, painting, and architecture. During the 1300s, Europe rose out of the Dark Ages. Bubonic plague was a disease which wiped out a lot of the population. Italy was perfectly situated between East and West for overseas trade. The cash came rolling in. The country was made up of independent city-states. The city of Florence was ruled by a family of bankers, the Medicis. They used their vast wealth to sponsor the arts and sciences. The true impact of the Renaissance could really be seen in the visual arts. New styles and techniques emerged. The influence of geometry and mathematics could be seen as artists strived for perfection. By the mid 14th century, paintings had very flat, decorative, religious themed images. All this changed, however with the arrival of painters like Giotto and Fra Angelico. They studied artists from ancient Greece and Rome and drew from real life. They painted with egg tempera, which was color pigment mixed with egg yolk. They also used gold, which could be flattened as thin as leaves and could be brushed onto the paintings. Our good friend, Johannes Gutenberg, helped spread these new ideas to the rest of the world with his invention, the printing press. By the early Renaissance, artists painted people more realistically and placed them in three-dimensional settings. The introduction of perspective revolutionized the way buildings and backgrounds were painted. The architecture at the time was also inspired by ancient Greece and Rome. Common features included columns, pilasters, domes. The most famous dome of all was Florence Cathedral, designed by none other than famous engineer and architect Filippo Brunelleschi. These years saw an explosion in creativity. Compositions, meaning where people and objects are placed in a picture, became balanced, proportioned, perfected. The ideas for artworks no longer came just from religion. Oil paints took longer to dry and could be applied thickly or thinly, allowing artists to give their works a much more realistic feel. These artists became the superstars of their day. A true Renaissance man could be a painter, sculptor, architect, engineer, all rolled into one. Some were even inventors, like our good friend Leonardo da Vinci. Michelangelo Bonarroti was also a painter and sculptor, whose crowning achievement was the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in Rome. So what was life like for the men, women, and children of the Renaissance? Men worked as bankers, farmers, or goldsmiths. Women were either silk weavers, midwives, seamstresses, or nuns. Children didn't have it easy either. From the time they learned to put one foot in front of the other, they were expected to work just as hard as the grown-ups. This was a time of style. What you wore and how you wore it was very important. Women wore sweeping gowns, and every man had to wear a hat. They would show off their new threads, at a variety of public and sporting events. Popular pastimes included chess, 
bullfighting and jousting. Most music at the time was composed solely for the church. However, as with all the arts, new styles were introduced and music was also made simply for people's entertainment. Here's where I will end the video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Renaissance or Renaissance with Cosimo. So, some important information to remember. The word Renaissance or Renaissance means rebirth. The Renaissance occurred after the Dark Ages in Europe. An emphasis on painting, sculpting, architecture, and religion occurred. A number of famous painters and paintings emerged from the Renaissance. As we learn, two of the most famous were Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. An important invention called the printing press was created and changed the way materials were written. So let's learn about Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo was a Renaissance painter. He was born in Italy in 1452 and died in 1519. His paintings and sculptures were heavily influenced by the Renaissance humanist ideas. Humanism focused on the human body. So in many sculptures and paintings during the Renaissance, they are based on the human body. Two of his famous works were The Last Supper and The Mona Lisa. On the left is The Last Supper and on the right is The Mona Lisa which we will be learning about today. Time for video number two. Get your graphic organizers ready or your blank copy if you want to use a blank one for this video. Oop, sorry, one more thing. I will be stopping the video at two minutes and 14 seconds. Now let's begin. We are going to learn about one of the most famous works of art in all of history. Here it is. What is this painting called? Uh-huh, the Mona Lisa. This video is all about the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa is a painting from the Renaissance period in Italy. The Renaissance period was an amazing time for the arts, science, and culture in Europe. It was painted by someone you may have heard of. His name was Leonardo da Vinci. Here is a portrait that Leonardo da Vinci made of himself. Yeah. Leonardo da Vinci was an incredible inventor, scientist, and artist. He kind of did it all. He was like the Renaissance champion. Hey, look at this. Here is a statue of Leonardo da Vinci. He painted the Mona Lisa sometime in the early 1500s. That was a long time ago. All right, so this guy, Leonardo da Vinci, painted this amazing work of art, the Mona Lisa, and it happened during a special time known as the Renaissance. Now, you may have guessed this, but the Mona Lisa is a portrait of a real person. Her name was Lisa del Giocondo. Her husband commissioned the painting. Leonardo da Vinci never got paid for the Mona Lisa and didn't finish the painting until years later when he was living in France. It has remained in France since then and today is owned by the country of France. So the Mona Lisa will never be sold and remains one of the greatest art treasures in the world. 
Ready for some wonderful news? You can go see the Mona Lisa. That's right. It is kept in a museum called Le Louvre. Can you say that? It's French. It's a little tricky. Le Louvre. It now has its own room, and they make sure it stays safe. Okay. Here, I will stop the video. Have you ever been to France to see the Louvre? Sam, you have? I bet it's really nice there, right? Yeah, I've always wanted to go there. Let's continue now. So, what is the Mona Lisa? The Mona Lisa was a portrait that was painted by Leonardo da Vinci in 1503, or the early 1500s, as the video said. The portrait is thought to be of Lisa Gerardini, but it still remains a mystery of who it actually is. You might be thinking now, didn't the video just say Lisa del Giamondo? Well, it's still a mystery, so no one really knows who she is. The Mona Lisa remains to be one of the most famous works that da Vinci ever painted. It was a very unusual painting for its time, since portraits were once rare. Many people during the Renaissance were very poor, and portraits cost a large sum of money. Culture and art. Art can be a great way to portray a culture's religion, ideas, traditions, and the personalities of people who are a part of that culture. We learned all about that today on how the Mona Lisa was made during a time of cultural rebirth where portraits were very rare and quite expensive. Her mysterious painting emerged from the Renaissance. Your assignment right now is to start writing a paragraph based on how culture affected the art that was created during the Renaissance. If you do not finish the paragraph, please finish it by tonight and post it on our class page under Mona Lisa assignment. Remember, a paragraph is usually five to six sentences. That's five to six sentences. If you would like to write more, you can. Feel free to. So for now, have a great weekend and I will see you all soon. One last question before I let you go. Give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this class today. I see a lot of thumbs up. Anna, do I see you giving me a thumbs down? Come on. I know you like this video and this lesson. So bye, everyone. I hope you all have a great weekend, and I can't wait for our next class. Bye.